Hello, I'm Tony Vincent, and I'll be showing you how to pair audio from Audacity with slides from PowerPoint using Movie Maker. This screencast is geared toward Windows users since I'm using all Windows software. On a Mac, lots of teachers use GarageBand to create enhanced podcasts, sometimes called enhanced AAC files. Enhanced podcasts are a special multimedia format that combine audio, images, and web links into one small computer file. It can also have chapter markers like DVD video, so you can jump to specific points in the audio. The problem for Windows users is that GarageBand is Macintosh only software, and there's not a good equivalent for Windows. So I'd like to show you how to make a similar kind of multimedia file using Audacity, PowerPoint, and Movie Maker. This file won't technically be an enhanced podcast. It will be a larger movie file, and it won't have chapter markers, but it will have great audio and images. First, let's look at the finished product. This is the video you'll see me create about divisibility by three. It's two and a half minutes long. Enjoy. I'm Mr. Vincent, and in the next couple of minutes, you're going to be able to amaze yourself by easily identifying if a given number is divisible by three. When a number is divisible by three, it means that the number can be divided into groups of three and have no remainders. Six is divisible by three because three goes into six exactly two times, no remainder. Eight is not divisible by three because eight divided by three is two remainder two. There's a remainder, so 8 is not divisible by 3. To tell if the number 342 is divisible by 3, you could do a long division problem. Or you can use the divisibility rule for 3. That rule is, a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. So, instead of dividing 342 by 3, we can add its digits. 3 plus 4 plus 2 equals 9. The sum is 9, and that's divisible by 3, so the number 342 is divisible by 3. How about 1,024? Is it divisible by 3? 1 plus 0 plus 2 plus 4 equals 7. 7 is not divisible by 3, so the original number, 1,024, is not divisible by 3. This works no matter how large the number. Let's try 5,612,109. It would take a while to do the long division, so using the divisibility rule will save us time. 5 plus 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 9 equals 24. I'm hoping you use your excellent mental math skills to add those numbers together. Now, is 24 divisible by 3? Hopefully you know your math facts and instantly recognize that 3 times 8 equals 24. If not, you could next add 2 plus 4, which equals 6, and you know that 6 is divisible by 3. So yes, 5,612,109 is indeed divisible by 3. Remember, a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Being able to quickly test a number for divisibility will help you decide if a number is prime or composite and help you list the factors of a number. This is especially helpful when you are simplifying fractions. I'm Mr. Vincent. And now you are smarter. Let me show you how I created that using Audacity, PowerPoint, and Movie Maker. First though, the most important piece is a script. I wrote a simple script that I planned ahead of time for my divisibility by three uh, episode here. So you can see it's pretty short. Actually, what's interesting about scripts is that it probably takes you longer to, to write the script than record it for sure, and that they take a lot longer to say than what you think. This doesn't seem like it's much text, but it did take me two and a half minutes to read through it. After the script, then inside of Audacity, I recorded audio. Now I used Audacity because I was able to add sound effects uh, and I was able to add music and edit out mistakes very easily. If you want to know more about Audacity, search the Arizona K-12 Center's blog and look for Audacity and Screencast and I show you exactly how to do this. But then I exported my audio as a wave and then it was saved to my desktop. And that's the file that I have 
right here. Now it's time to open Movie Maker. Inside of Movie Maker, I will just drag and drop the audio file in there. It adds to my collections, and I need to put it into my timeline. I can play inside of Movie Maker, and this works for a lot of applications where you play and pause a lot. Instead of constantly pushing the play button and then pause, is I can use the space bar on my keyboard to play and pause. So I'll do that quite a bit through this demonstration. Now, besides the audio, I want to pair it with visuals that I created inside of PowerPoint. I use PowerPoint to make simple slides. Uh, here's one that look that are very simple, very large, because you this will probably be viewed in a web browser or perhaps even on an iPod with a very small screen. Inside of PowerPoint, after I've made my presentation, I exported it as a series of JPEGs. And then they are all in this folder here, uh, numbered accordingly. So I'm able to take what's in this folder, I'm just going to select all of it, and drag and drop this into my collections. And now they are added to my collections. Let's remove this window. And now I'm able to pair the audio with what I've done in PowerPoint. This is the part that takes some fine tuning. So I have my first slide here. I drag and drop it to the very beginning of my project. And I'm going to stretch it out because I know that the beginning is going to last maybe 20 seconds. Then I'm going to press the play button and adjust this just by dragging and dropping it in the timeline here, dragging the edge dragging and dropping it. Uh, and then I'll be able to see uh, how the links work out. Uh, I've also done something in Audacity. I changed the pitch of my voice for the final product so that you could tell the difference between when I'm talking for the screencast that I'm talking to you now and my voice from when it's inside of my recording. So let's take a look and see how this turns out. Audio's there. I'm Mr. Vincent, and in the next couple of minutes, you're going to be able to amaze yourself by easily identifying if a given number is divisible by 3. When a number is divisible by 3, it means that the number can be divided into groups of 3 and have no remainders. 6 is divisible by... Alright, I paused it by pressing the space bar. I'm going to have this be just a little bit shorter because my example of 6 divided by 3 has a slide. And I'm going to make this long. It's always easier, I found, to make these longer and cut them down shorter than the other way around. So now I press the space bar to play some more to see how my audio lines up. By 3, because 3 goes into 6 exactly 2 times. No remainder. 8 is... Okay, then I start my example about 8, so I'm going to move to the end there, drag down my slide that has to do with 8, make it longer. Because 8 divided by 3 is 2 remainder 2. There's a remainder, so 8 is not divisible by 3. All right, then I can tell that I was starting my next example, so I cut that down. Let's drag this so I can see. Next one is 342 divided by 3. 342 is divisible by 3. You could do a long division problem. Or you can use the divisibility rule for 3. That rule is... All right, now before I say the rule, I have a visual for that, so I'll cut this down and then put the rule on the screen. I made it white to make it really stand out. And I also echo my voice for this part inside of Audacity. For three, that rule is a number is divisible by three if the sum of the digits is divisible by three. So instead of dividing 342 by three. So then I move this back, I bring in 342 digits. 3 plus 4 plus... Uh, you know, I probably don't even want that one, so I'm going to remove it from the timeline just by right-clicking and deleting that and just bring this one in. And so I think you get the idea here now of it's just a matter of bringing in these uh, PowerPoint slides that are now JPEGs into my timeline and matching it with my audio. I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and once it's done, I'll show you how I export it and convert it. I've now finished bringing in my slides and matching it to my audio. So now it's time to finish the movie. 
All along I've been saving my Windows Media project, just like any other kind of document, you save early and save often. But now it's time to export it into a document format that more programs can use. Windows Movie Maker will only export to uh, the Windows Movie or Windows Video format, WMV, Windows Media Video. At, uh, after that, we can convert it. So I click on the Finish Movie tab and save it to my computer. I click Next. You want the best results. And now it's saving. While that's working away, I've actually already exported it, so you don't have to sit through that. But after it's ex exported, then it's time to go to the site zamzar.com. There are actually lots of different websites that will convert a video from one format to another. My favorite happens to be Zamzar. So it says it converts video in four easy steps, and it's true. First, I browse. And on my desktop, I have 3movie underscore 001. It's a Windows media file. I choose that. And ne now step two is to convert the format. I want to convert it to MPEG-4. That is a format that will work on Macintosh computers. It will play in QuickTime. It will play in iTunes. It will play in Windows Media Player. It will play in web browsers and it will play on iPods. So if you wanted to use this video file as a podcast, that's the format for you. So MPEG-4 is my favorite video format. Step three is to put in your address, your email address, because it's going to take Zamzar servers a while to convert the video. So you upload it, and then when it's done, probably about a half hour later, it will send you an email with a link that tells you that it's ready to go and where you can download the finished video file. So I click OK after I click Convert. You do want to keep your browser window open while it's uploading, but then when it's done, you wait for the email and click on the link to download the converted MPEG-4 version. And then you can take that, you can upload it to your web server, you can put it on iPods, put it on your classroom computers, distribute it through the web, upload it to YouTube. You can do all sorts of things with that video file. You might say that I might as well narrate a PowerPoint or create a photo story. And that's all true. There are many different ways to pair audio and video together. I like the method I just showed you using Audacity first because it gives me the most control over the sound. I also like starting with the sound first, particularly in a podcast, because sound is usually more important than the visuals. If I start with the audio, then I can build the visuals around what I have to say. Hopefully, because there are not visuals yet, I use more precise language and better pacing. Once I have great audio, I can then design slides in PowerPoint and export them as JPEGs to be paired with the audio in Movie Maker. Like I said, this is just one of many methods. The end product, whether teacher or student made, will be impressive and time well spent. I'm Tony Vincent. Thanks for watching.